Okay, we're back for another episode. Uh, let's see now. Walk backwards and forwards, walk backwards, yeah. How cool. Okay, so I've uh, I've dug out a little bit of extra space here for more barrels and chests and things like that. And I've expanded to an area downstairs. I haven't got anything in here though, but that's just so that I've got space to expand. And that should be enough for me. Uh, the diamonds that we process through the the grinder. Oh, look at this! We've got even more rubbish to do. Uh, the diamonds that we process through the grinder turned out to be just under one and a half stacks. What we got happening here? Yeah, it's all done. Uh, let's just get rid of that. Now we'll take our our goodie box, put it here. I'll move this in a moment, but uh, I thought today what we might do is we, you can probably hear the baby cry in the background, she doesn't want to go to bed. Um, what I might thought I might do is we might set up one of those um, rail things, the, you know, that tree farm that I had that you were interested in. So that's our project for today. We've got a bit of space, which is all good. Now one of the first things that we have to make is we have to make some, some tracks. All right. So recipe for tracks. This is it. We need this standard rail and this wooden rail bed. Standard rail you can get by putting iron, bronze, or steel into something called a rolling machine. And this wooden rail bed is four wooden ties, which is some slabs and some creosote capsules but you can also use a carpenter and put in your slabs pipe in some creosote and it will produce your rail ties all right so what i've got oh and the way you make um where is it here we go here we go creosote oil is by using something called a coke oven and you put in some some coal and you get some creosote out the side. Uh, a coke oven is made using coke oven brick. It's a multi-block structure. This is five sand and four bricks makes one of these. So it's a little bit of an investment of brick and sand, not too much. And what it looks like is this thing. So you've got nine by nine on the bottom and then you fill in the sides so that they're solid the back, the sides, the top, leave an empty space in the middle and you can see it's put this thing on the front. That means it's, it's come together into a, um, a coke oven. So we'll just grab some coal. Drop it in here and that's going to start to uh, to do our thing and make some coke coke some some creosote. Next up, we need this machine called a carpenter, which is this one. Okay, now that's made using, these are all different kinds of bronze, right? Um, so it's six of those, two glass, and then this sturdy casing, which is another eight. Bronze we can get from our alloy smelter. Stick it to alloys only. Three copper and one tin. Makes us four bronze. Alright, now that we're finished with this, I'm going to change that to furnace only. Grab our chest. Stick it on top. Okay. So we need a sturdy casing. Goes in the middle. Bronze and glass. And that's our carpenter. And I'm going to power it using those two stupid survivalist generators that I had earlier. Alright, so it's now got power. Um, we can pipe the fluid out of here, once it's it's got some. Which it almost does. There we go, coal, creosote. So we can pump this out 
using just a normal fluid conduit that we have lying around. Extract, auto, and you can see it's put it in here. So now we need some wood slabs. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Good. Lovely. Now the way we, we make this work is this part up here is for the recipe and this part up here is for the actual resources to make the recipe. So we set up our recipe What's going on here? Track Carpenter Oh I think it needs to have a bit more creosote in it before it'll actually figure out what it's making So we'll just wait here and make sure this is going to work properly That's done Yep, there it is, it's got enough it's figured it out and it'll use three of the slabs here 750 mils of that and produce a wooden tie and the reason why it's complaining about no recipe is because it doesn't have enough creosote ah, what else can we make today? I know something that would be very handy three of those four of those a bit of leather, an ender pearl, five gold, and two diamonds. So with this, right, I'm pretty sure you've seen some of this before because you'll have made one yourself. Three paper, and a piece of leather makes a book, four obsidian, two diamonds makes an enchantment table right add another five gold and an ender pearl and we get a chunk loader now the whole idea of a chunk loader is I'm just gonna push F9 right and you can see the red lines and the, the green lines this area that you can see bordered by this frame this is one chunk this is how Minecraft does area it's all done by chunk and we move into the next one and you can see yeah all right now chunks only stay loaded when you're in it okay yeah you got the basic idea so everything here is running uh, you know sort of quite happily because I'm actually here how did I get to I don't know let's go and put one in the bin <laughs> Put one in the bin. Yeah, so everything is, you know, my machines and stuff like that are running because I'm here. And the fact that I'm here has got all these chunks loaded. But what happens if I go somewhere else? Well, if I go somewhere else, all of this will be unloaded and the stuff won't run. So a chunk loader helps to get around that. We can put this, and let's put it outside. Let's put it over here. Alright, so a chunk loader keeps a number of chunks loaded. If I right click on it, it says load in a two chunk radius, so nine chunks total will be loaded. Now I click show laser and it shows you the border of where it's loading things. That's not quite big enough. I want it to actually go out past my rubber trees. So we come back here and there is a limit to how much you can load. Yeah, you know, because otherwise it just gets messy. Alright, I think that's far enough. I 
It looks like that's just going past on the other side of the trees. And it is going past on the other side of the trees. This is the edge of the boundary. Uh, is that big enough? Uh, it should be. But, I mean, I'm not just going out in that direction. I'm also going a fair way out there and out there and out the back where I just don't need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my chunk loader. And I'm going to try putting it here. Now that goes to where the um, where it was before, and just in front of my house. That's not quite good enough. How about we pick it up? Actually, no, let's pick it up. Press F9 to look at our chunk boundaries again. And there's a boundary right here. So, you see, that's where I was, over there. So I'm thinking somewhere in this chunk. Let's put it down right there. Three, show lasers. And you can see it's coming through just on the other side of the, of the rubber trees. It's not going too far back there, or over to the, the sides. I think that works really well. So we can hide our lasers, and we're good. And that way, if I go somewhere else, this will keep all my chunks loaded, and it'll keep everything running. How are we doing here? We've got three wooden tires. Now the next thing we need to make is our rolling machine. Here we go, rolling machine, and it's just four pistons, a crafting table, and four iron. Fairly straightforward recipe. So there's our crafting table, four pistons, four iron, and we're done. Alright. Need a bit more of that. Stretch it out. I'll put this up here. Okay, now, so we've got our rolling machine, we're making our wooden tie things, we need to make some standard rail, which you can use iron, you know, which gets you eight, bronze gets you six, or steel gets you sixteen, now that's really cool, I like that idea, seeing as how we can use this little machine, to make steel for us. Wrong hole. Okay, so I've already started baking some up. I'm going to let that cook and then I'll, I'll furnace it so I've got some steel and I'll show you how to use the the rolling machine to make our rails. In the meantime, Our little generators out here will keep generating. This is a fairly economical sort of a machine. This, it's been running for a while and it's only made six. So, what can we do? Well, we can just wait. We might as well add some more wood slabs, just in case we want them. So this is this is uh, one way to you know get a hold of your 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 tracks. You I'm um, making creosote. I'm using the creosote and slabs in order to make wooden ties. I'm using a rolling machine to make rails and so on. Right. The second way to get a hold of um, tracks is to find an abandoned mine shaft and just dig up all the tracks that are in there. It's fairly simple. And the third way is if we go and find, sometimes in a village, you'll see one of these buildings made out of brick. Now this is a rail building. Inside, we'll find some bits of rail on the floor. There's a free rolling machine, which you can get. We've got some standard rail, 
and some creosote oil in a bottle and some more tracks and some wooden ties. It's quite good. Alright. Nothing much out the back here. Uh, so that's your, you know, basically your, your three ways of getting rail. Let's just put this here. Um, yeah, and because I've got some creosote in a bottle, I could actually use some wooden slabs, and I'll just grab, say, three of them. So I'll grab that many. So if I put some wooden slabs and then some creosote in a bottle, that'll give me wooden ties as well. In a circle, and that's my wooden rail bed. So I've got a few rail beds, now I just need some rails, craft it like that, and I get 32 pieces of track. Which is a fair bit, really. So we'll just dump all of our, our track in this little box. You know, bits and pieces that we found. But I think if you're going to do something like this the first time, you should always do it the proper way. Coke oven, carpenter, manufacture your tyres, you know, make your rails in a rolling machine. Have we finished growing? No. Slow, slow, slow. Make your ties in a rolling machine. There we go, 18 dust. I'll just quickly furnace this. Three, four, five, six. Alright. So we can set up six like this. Um, but it's not automatically making it because the rolling machine won't use automatically the last set of stuff that you put in here. But instead you can click and it will roll and produce some more rails for us. Very nice. Very good. We'll probably have some leftover stuff by the time we finish this. Actually, we'll have a lot of leftovers. So I'm just going to dump this because I don't want to use it. And instead, we will stick to cooking up our coke, making our wooden ties, and... Yep. Here we go. I'll show you. Six. Six. And it's automatically going through and using stuff until it gets to the last one. And the last one you actually have to say, click to craft, click on it, it'll craft, use the, the last bit of stuff, and we're done. All good. Alright, I'm going to leave that there. I've... Uh, Oh, wow. Um, I'm thinking my iron chest is not quite big enough anymore. We're going to have to do something about that. Hmm. What do we do? What do we do? Anyway, I'll be back when, you know, in a little bit, and uh, talk to you soon. Okay, well it looks like we've cooked up all of the coke coal. We've made a bunch of ties. Let's go inside. Let's harvest the ender pearls. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. 
good, good. They can go back in the box. I still have to clean these boxes up at some point. Uh, and I've got to do something about that. Okay, so we've got our tyres. We've got our rail beds. And we've got a shitload of rails. So, how big do we want our tree farm? Alright. Let's see now. Let's grab some dirt. And I think here. Yeah, it should be good. So what we're going to want, uh, oh, and I also use fences along the edges to stop um, to stop animals from wandering in, uh, because you know if they wander in and they get in the way, it's just going to be a pain in the butt. Um, Let's see now. Okay, so on a fence. Okay, so I want a fence, and then I want a gap, and then the trees, and then the rails. So that means that up the back here, we want the fence, and then a gap, and then the, and then the tree, and then the rail. And let's take it all the way down to... Yeah, I'm thinking about here. Alright. La 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 la, bring it along here. Now... I don't think I want to bring the fence, bring it all the way out to here because, you know, I still need to have some room to get through to get to my rubber trees. So I'm going to have the fence here, gap, tree, rail. All right, three. So you always leave three in between because that way you've got tree, torch, tree, and then rail. Do do do. Leave a gap of three, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so we're down here, right? I can either take it all the way across to here and make that our farm, or I can do another, you know, sort of couple of loops. And if I do, it'll be here, down here. Okay? That'll be where, you know, where my last rail is. I have a tree, torch, no room for the fence. So we're going to cut it off where it is. Good. Let's clear out all the torches. Because I'm very fussy and I want them in particular spots. Put one here, here, here. Good, good. Three. Boo-boo-boo-boo-boo-boo. 
They're in the right spots? Yes, they are. Hum, 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 hum. Can go there, that can go there. One here, one here. One here. Dup. And one here. Okay. Well, good. Good light coverage. So now, I think I should make some fences. Look at how much rail I've got left over. We made so much. Look at all this. Three and bit stacks. And heaps of... Ah, whatever. Okay. So we've got our track laid out. We know roughly where it's going to go. And I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start building the cart because that's going to take a while. Now to build the cart, we need, first of all, um, this thing, a cart assembler. All right? It's pretty easy, it's some stone, some iron, a simple PCB, which is iron, redstone and gold. So let's uh, grab some of that. Put this back next to our workbench. Iron, ah, oh, some stone. Where have I got stone? I think I dumped some over here. Yeah. Alright. So the PCB, if I remember right, is this. Yep, there it is. And I need three, four, and then two of those. And that's our card assembler. Just drop that there. Now, first thing we need for a cart is we need a hull. It's the basic thing that you use to, you know, mount everything on. Crap. Alright, there's a few different ones you can get, right? There's a, a wooden, standard, reinforced, mechanical pig, which is kind of awesome. Creative and Galgadorian. This, hang on, pig one. Yeah, so you just need bacon. Awesome. Now the bacon one isn't as good as the, uh, the standard one. Reinforced hull requires reinforced metal, which requires stabilised metal, which, you know, costs diamonds and obsidian and other crazy stuff like that. We're just not going to worry about that. That's just, that's crazy. We're going to go with this one, the uh, the standard hull, which is five iron, a couple of iron wheels, which is some sticks around a piece of iron. Um, I think I've got wood in here still. No, I've got wood on me. Boom, 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 boom. Doo -doo. Two of those. Five like that. And there we go, there's a standard hull. <coughs> so we put that in here, and you see it's opened up all of the slots for everything else. Okay? Now, number one thing to make is is we need to make an engine. Alright? And there's a couple of different options for the engine that we use. One of them is we can use uh, a solar engine, but the problem with the solar engine is that the cart's going to be driving under trees, which will block the sunlight, which will stop it from getting light, which will stop it from running. So a solar engine is out. You've got lava engines, uh, which are really cool, and I do like them, but the downside is we're not producing and pumping lava yet. 
So that pretty much leaves us with a, um, a coal engine. Now a coal engine, here we go, here is a coal engine, it's got a modular cost of 50, oh the other thing is you have to be careful about certain parts because like this extracting chest is too complicated a, a piece to go onto a standard hull. Um, yeah, but you know, experiment with a bit, maybe in creative and see what parts you can make and have a bit of fun and yeah, you get the hang of it. Alright, so this is our coal engine. Some iron, a couple of pistons, and a furnace. So we shall quickly make a couple of pistons. Do 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 a couple of pistons. Alright. And a furnace some iron and there's our coal engine. We drop that in and it's all good. Now we need a tool and there are a couple of tools that are available for use with um, with Steve Carts. You've got your wood cutting one which is the one that we need. You've got a farmer um, and I, th I think that might actually be it. Yeah. I think that's about it. Um, the farmer, you know, you can only do really basic stuff with it. You can't do complicated crops, so, you know, as much fun as it is to make these, they're sort of a limited option and you should let it go as quickly as you can. Basic farmer, no. Basic woodcutter is what we need because we're not using anything more complicated. So we need these saw blades, just two iron and a diamond. And we need some iron and we need a wood cutting core which has eight saplings of any kind around an advanced PCB which is just two simple PCBs, a bit iron, a bit redstone. So we need diamonds which are in here. Five of those. Um, we need some saplings. And we need that here, we need two of these, some redstone, an advanced PCB. Surround that with saplings and we get our wood cutting core. A bit of iron, five diamonds and they go around the top. And there's our basic wood cutter. Next we need some storage space for all the bits and pieces that it, it, um, it digs up or it cuts down. Um, to, to store so that it can carry them back to where we want them to be. And the one that we're going to use, given the size of our farm, so the, the bigger the farm, the more storage you're going to need. Uh, for a farm that size, you know, just a simple side chest is going to do it. How weird. This, this side chest has a modular cost of 3, this is a modular cost of 6, but that stores a lot more stuff than this. Very strange. Alright, so we're making all of these panes and things, okay? Let's grab a little more wood. Because this gets a little ugly. Um, side chest, side chest, side chest, where are you? Here we go. Alright, so the first thing we need is a chest lock. That is a piece of iron and a piece of stone. Iron, stone, gets me eight. Fabulous. Uh, boom, 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 boom. The... This thing, the chest pane. Uh, any planks like this, this one and this one must be logs. Everything else is planks and you get 32. That is then used to make the large one and the huge one, you know, four or nine. So all we've got to do is just make a heap of these things. Let's just put this down here. So we'll grab a heap of this. Just because. And if we look, we need two of the small ones, two of the medium ones, and four of the large ones. So... 
let's just quickly make four of the large ones, two of the medium ones, two of the small ones, yeah, top and bottom, chest lock goes in the middle, large pane out to the side, and there's our side chest. All good. Now we need some add-ons. What sort of add-ons should we have? Mm. I know. I'm running this thing on coal or charcoal or something like that. Um, what would be really convenient is, like, you know, we're cutting down wood. If we could turn some of the wood into charcoal in order to run the cart. So, let us have a look at... Oh, here we go. Here's a smelter. This thing is just a simple PCB in a furnace. Um, that is a piece of gold. Four of those. Four of those. And a furnace. Not other way around. Yep, there we go. So we can tell it to smelt up some of the wood and turn it into charcoal, which can then be used to drive the, the engine. So it'll run for, you know, it's not going to run out of, um, of coal. Eventually the, this diamond blade will wear down, but, uh, meh, who gives a shit? We can just, we can repair it, or when it's run out we can move on to something better. But it is quite cool to run one of these for a little while. Now the other thing I like to add into this sort of thing, um, is an information provider. And I'll, t I'll show you why in a minute. So we've got two of those. Uh, some glass panes. Where is it? Information provider. So they're at the bottom. A couple of bits of iron. Oh. Fail. Bit of glowstone, which I think is in this box. And a sign, which I have in one of these boxes. I don't have in one of these boxes. Alright. So the sign goes at the bottom, and the glowstone goes here, and we get an information provider. We drop that in. And it says it's ready to assemble. So we've got an engine, a tool, some storage, and a couple of other little bits and pieces. That is all we need. So we'll drop this in here and say go. And I'll tell you how long it's got to go. It's got about 16 minutes, which is fine. That can just happily do its thing and we'll do something else. Now, when we've got this thing running around, right? We want some kind of a means for it to unload the the loot that it's got and load up on charcoal if it needs to. So what we need is a cargo manager or two. We're actually going to make two. All right. Cargo manager requires some large panes, some huge panes, this dynamic pane, which is just some iron panes. Uh, these are iron panes. These are even more iron panes, so it's basically down to iron panes, right? And we need two of these things. So we need to make eight of these. And these are like eight of the iron panes. It's just eight of the normal pane around a piece of iron. So, um, you know what I think we're going to do? I think we're going to ditch this furnace. Because we've got, you know, the alloy smelter, we've got the redstone furnace, and I could really do with the extra slot of crafting space. So, we are going to get rid of it. Because it's not doing anything for me anymore. Chest goes here. Upgrades, get rid of the furnace, drop in a crafting table, drop in some storage, and we're good to go. Alright, so. What 
we need a bunch of these things. So we need four of these huge ones per cargo manager. We need two, so I'll want eight. Then we need four of the large ones, which is a square of four. Good. And finally, we need this bit in the middle, which is four of these dynamic panes around a piece of redstone, and that is this and a piece of redstone. So that's going to take up one of these requires four, so we need eight. Eight of these, eight redstone. One, eight. And ten, good. And there's our two thingies. Uh, these should go here, these should go here, and I'm completely wrong. And there's our two cargo managers. All right. So we'll put one of them here and one of them here. And one thing I don't want is the cart getting sort of down around here where it's got to go do stuff and deciding to start plant trees. It would be very annoying. And you've got a thing trying to plant, a thing trying to dig up, and you know, managers trying to undo stuff, and I you know, bugger that. So I'm going to dig up. all along here and you can start planting again from there yeah from under there good fill it up with cobble good good we put our track back in except I'm going to leave the one in front of this cargo manager empty and this one Now the reason for that is, we don't just want our little cart to come trundling along here and keep on going and all that kind of stuff. What we want is for it to stop in front of the cargo manager until it's finished interacting with the cargo manager. Then move on to the next one and do the same again. Stop here, wait for the uh, cargo manager to, to finish with it, and away we go. And the way we do that is by using this advanced detector rail. Now the cargo managers and the detector rail have been written basically with each other in mind. Um, the, the cargo manager, when it detects a cart, it will send a signal to the detector rail and, you know, and stuff like that to stop it from letting the, stop the cart from moving off. It's actually quite clever. So all we need is some iron, a bit of redstone and a, a couple of pressure plates, which is two bits of stone. Go back down here, here we go, two pressure plates, a piece of redstone, and some iron, and that gives us two detector rails. Slap them down here, and that's, you know, that's done. So what I want to do is I want this one to unload all of the stuff that it needs to, all right, and put it in some barrels, and then I want charcoal to come out of the barrels and then back into this one so that this can load up the engine and keep it going. And the first thing we need to do is we need to configure each cargo manager. So yellow, you see how there's colors on each side? That's so that you can tell the thing what it's doing. Yellow is the side that we're working with for both of these. So red, I disable it, blue, 
disabled, green, disabled. So this was so this is just the stuff for the yellow side, right? And what I want it to do is I don't want it to transfer to the cart. I want it to transfer from the cart. And I don't want it to do the whole cart. Uh, and I'll explain why in a moment when I, can, when I can actually put the cart down and show you. But I want, if you keep on clicking, rail is storage. Okay, so this is now set up so that if it sees a cart on the yellow side, which is the one we're looking at, it will take all the stuff that's in the storage slots and transfer it into the cargo manager. All right. This one, <coughs> we want to do something similar. Disable everything else. And then on the yellow side, we want to transfer to the cart. Now we'll be sending charcoal out here and we want this to go to the engine. And that's it. Right. Um, now, here, we're going to want some barrels, just sort of stacked up here. And the tree farm will produce, it'll produce oak, oak saplings, apples, and charcoal. So we need four. We want to put our item conduits here. And we'll put this one here. And that's because this one, we'll wait until we get everything in place first. Uh, apples can go in the top. And this is this is sort of important. All right? We've got to set the barrels up properly because otherwise we'll end up with stuff everywhere. <laughs> saplings can go here. Okay, so I've got three stacks of saplings, right? Now, can you see there's a little padlock there? The reason for that is because if I take this out, it says zero, but the picture is still there. If I put it into here, right, you can see there's eight apples, there's no padlock. If I take all eight apples out, it goes blank. So basically, what I've done is I've locked this barrel to be apples. And the way you turn that on and off is with an empty hand, crouch and right click. And it'll turn it on and off. All right, so that's gotta be saplings. Uh, this one here can be wood. And then the bottom one can be charcoal. Let's, uh, let's go and cook some more charcoal. Yeah, 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 all good. So we tell this to extract always. And then we set these four to insert and it will insert into the barrel where it can. All right, so let's just say it's got some apples in here. Yeah, because these are all locked to other products, right? If I put the apples in here, you can see it's, it's inserted them into there because that's the only place that could actually take apples. Now we've put charcoal at the bottom so that I can just put a single piece of conduit Two, naught, and it's in here, ready to dump into the engine. And ba -ba -ba -ba. Do, do, do. Two minutes to go. Now, I think we're pretty much ready. I mean, I'll come back a bit later on and I'll fence off the farm so that I don't get bloody cows and sheep and God knows what else getting in here and causing a ruckus. But for the moment, this is it. This is our little farm. Not very big, but you know, it's funky. It'll do. I keep on harvesting these and just eating the berries. All 
Right. Okay, I'll be back in a couple of minutes when that's finished. Okay, we're back. That was a nice little break. But as you can see, it's it's finished. And it's dumped this little thing down in the bottom right hand corner. There is our cart. Which is very awesome. Extremely awesome. Do 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 now, do you remember I said we'd get back to talking about this idea of storage slots and the engine and stuff like that? Alright, so, we, all you have to do, oh, if you punch it a few times it'll come off, um, just point it some, some rail, right click and it'll place down the cart, which is very cool. Very funky looking thing. Now this is what I was talking about, you know, this, when a, it's putting charcoal into the engine, it will put it into these slots only. When this one is taking shit out of the storage slots, it will take them out of these slots only. Okay? Now we've got this smelter here. What we've got to do is we've got to take a piece of oak wood and click the top and it'll automatically fill in the bottom. So the smelter says, I'm going to take oak wood and I'm going to smelt it into charcoal. Wonderful, very good. The wood cutter, this is the thing that um, you know cuts down the wood when the durability runs out, it can't cut anything down anymore. Sounds fairly straightforward. And also the slots underneath it are where you put the saplings for it to plant. Okay? Um, and finally, do you remember we put that information panel on it? So, we've got, this is our information panel, alright? Um, and you can tell it to display things like, see, distance 2 meter, and turn that off, fuel left, absolutely zero. You can tell it what things that you want it to display, and that way you don't actually have to come and check on it to see how it's doing. I like to tell it I want to see how much storage has been used and how much durability is left on the tool. So you can see use storage 0 out of 15, 0 percent and the durability is 100 percent. It's I just find it really really handy. Last thing we need to do is we simply need to give it some fuel to get started and away it goes. I'm just going to go in creative, so we can have a look at this. All right, and there's our little Steve's cart tree farm, which was very funky, very cool little piece of technology. I like it a lot. Okay, we've got one more problem to solve. Yeah, you can see we've got 27 apples and eight saplings, spares. Um, when it's cutting down the leaves for saplings, it will automatically refill this. All right. When it's smelting stuff into charcoal, it won't replenish the engine. That's why we needed the second cargo manager. So, it's working. It's happy. It's good. We happy. Except for one thing. What happens when the barrels fill up? Now, if I leave it like this, right, and let it run, what will end up happening is that the barrels will fill up and then it won't be able to transfer stuff out of the cargo manager and the cargo manager will fill up and then it won't be able to empty the cart and then yeah it's just a big mess so what I need is a way of resolving that problem and the way you do that right is if we go and have a look at the the mod for these barrels Jabba you know we've got a, a few upgrades and things like that but if we've got this one, once the barrel's full, then anything extra that's put into it is just voided. You know, it's just destroyed. Uh, and if we, if we manage to fill these barrels, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I, I really don't mind. Now that takes two slots, which means we need to upgrade all these barrels to an iron. Now do you remember we, we did that in the past? 
So we'll just oh, and the um, the void upgrade is two pistons and a piece of obsidian. So I'm gonna grab four bits of obsidian while I'm here. All right, grab some of that. And I think we've still got enough stuff here. Okay, let's uh. Now I need four of these, so I need eight pistons all up. And they go top and bottom, obsidian in the middle, and there is my four upgrades. Now I need to make some fences. Let's put this here. So I need eight on each. Um, I could go here. Two. <laughs> eight. Eight. Good. I need four level ones, which are oak, and I need four level twos, which are iron. So that should be enough. Now we can go and put these upgrades on, and then these, and then the void upgrades. And you remember I said that you'd be able to see a little bit more on the barrels so up the top left you can see what level upgrade is on it the number of slots that are available um, you know that are free considering that some of them will be used down the left we've got our little void upgrade yeah but um, when you're not holding a jabber thing they're all they're all invisible so all these barrels have now got the void upgrade on them so when it gets to the point where I've filled up the barrel, anything extra that goes into it will just be voided. And I'm, you know, like I said before, I'm good with it. And it's tempting to do that, and I think I might. Okay. Now we want to extract green and we want this to be both in and out. Insert green, extract brown and this one should be insert brown. Insert green, insert, insert, All right, all good. Uh, another thing to get used to, get in the habit of, is when you've finished a, um, a recipe or a bit of crafting or something like that, just put all the stuff away. You know, find a home for it, get rid of it, and we're all happy. So, we're going to call it a quit call it quits for that episode because that is a fair amount of stuff and um, yeah I'll see you next time